Well, Bill Cosby at the ball game today had a little fun helping out the ground crew before the game today. Hopefully that holes will cool off the red hot Cincinnati ball club, a team that's come to town and really made it tough on us. Maybe a few batting tips for Sammy Sosa, too. Not like Sammy needs him. But Sosa today ought to have a pretty good shot at adding to his major league leading home run total of 58. The wind is howling out toward right field. It's a terrible day to pitch, a great day to hit. And hopefully the Cubs will be able to outslug this Cincinnati ball club, a team that, as Steve mentioned, has hit 22 home runs in their last six ball games. This is the first game out of the five where the wind was blowing straight out. It's out of the west at 17 miles an hour, meaning you have no safe haven. It'll go out any part of the ballpark and you don't have to hit it particularly well to get it out and unfortunately Cal Farnsworth has had some problems with the long ball he's done a little bit better since coming back from the minor leagues still in all this is a very potent red offense and they not only can run themselves into victory but as we've seen they've got some guys that can consistently hit the ball out of the park. Well, the Cincinnati Ball Club in two fights. First for the National League Central Division title. They're three games behind the Astros at the start of today's play. The Reds gained some ground on the Mets. They're three and a half games behind New York in the wild card race. And Cincinnati would be paying very close attention to that scoreboard here at Wrigley Field as Houston is underway in Philadelphia. A pair of 14 game winners are dueling in that ball game. Shane Reynolds for Houston, Paul Bird for the Phillies, and that game is scoreless after four innings and of course we'll keep you updated on those proceedings as Sammy Sosa takes his spot in right field the rest of his mates join him defensively out on the beautiful turf at Wrigley Field and we're just about set for baseball as Kyle Farnsworth faces this Cincinnati Reds starting lineup Pokey Reese Barry Larkin and Sean Casey atop the order Pokey Reese has had a great series he is eight for 18 against the Cubs Greg Vaughn four hits four homers in the series Dimitri Young playing right today. Eddie Taubensee behind the plate. Speedy Mike Cameron in center. Aaron Boone over at third. Pete Harnish, the ace of this Cincinnati staff with 14 wins, will bat ninth against Kyle Farnsworth and the Cubs. The Pepsi defense for Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. Rodriguez, Johnson, and Sosa left to right. Gay Eddie, Blauser, Morandini, and Grace in the infield. Joliet, Jeff Reed behind the plate. Kyle Farnsworth on the hill. Kyle on for his 18th start, looking for his fourth win. The ERA in the mid fives. And as you can see 25 home runs in just 104 innings and that will be put to the test today. So the Cubs have chosen to go with the veteran lineup today against the Cincinnati Reds. They've got some guys out there with some pretty decent numbers against Pete Harnish. And that's probably what Jim Riggleman had in mind when he put down the lineup that you figured might be the opening day lineup on this team. So only one rookie in the starting nine for the Cubs today and that's the pitcher Kyle Farnsworth and Kerwin Danley will be the home plate umpire Jim Wolf Anthony Rendazzo Ed Montague the rest of the umpiring crew here at Wrigley Field the Cubs at 56 and 83 Cincinnati at 81 and 58 this concludes the next to last homestand of the year and the century for the Cubs we're on the road for three in Houston three in Cincinnati next week. Kyle yeah, Farnsworth is going to try to do something that no Cub pitcher has done in this series. Pokey Reese has let off every game with a base hit. Well, let's see if we can retire him and not have to worry about his great speed. Yep, three singles and a double in the four games played by these teams here at Wrigley. And Reese stands in a 291 hitter. And Farnsworth's first pitch is right through there for strike one. Pretty good series for Pokey. Except when Bobby Ayala buried one in his ribs yesterday. Chopper foul. It's nothing in two. Reese having just a great year. A six game hitting streak. Nine homers. 47 runs driven in. If he and Larkin hit one more home run. Every player in their starting eight. Will have double digit home runs this season. A breaking ball misses outside. One and two the count to Pokey Reese a converted shortstop who might win a gold glove might win the most improved player award. That one popped up. Let's see if the wind does anything with that one. Morandini goes out. He's got it and Reese is retired in the leadoff spot for the first time in the series. So a good start for Farnsworth. 
And here's Barry Larkin, the All Star shortstop for Cincinnati. It's hard to believe, Stoney, 71 games for this man without a home run. I talked with Dennis Menke about that, and he said at this point of the season, despite the fact that he's been hitting around 300, Barry's just not swinging the bat particularly well. Now we've seen him kind of dragging the bat through the strike zone, which would lead you to believe that he'd hit the ball to right or right center field. And unfortunately, today, if you do that and you get enough on it, it is going to go out. This is a man that hit nearly 600 against the Cubs last year. That's right. You heard me correctly. 590 batting average by Larkin against the Cubs in 1998. In this series, however, Barry just two for 17. As you can see, the disparity between the first half and the second half, the power numbers have dwindled, as has the batting average. Farnsworth gets ahead of another hitter. It's 0 and 1. Look at those numbers. When you look up the term Cub Killer, he might be in the top three of that list. A chopper hit to the left side. Gaetti in. Snow call. Throw to first in time. Two up, two down. Good play by Gaetti. You really have no other choice here. You can't let it bounce. If you do, Larkin's going to beat it out. So Gary comes in. He picks this one. It rolls around for a bit, but he's able to snag it, grab it, and then throw it and get it there in plenty of time. Well, here's the guy I'm most worried about in this ball game. Here's a dangerous, dangerous customer. Sean Casey, 0 for his last 11, still fourth in the league in hitting at 337 and 23 home runs. The ball he hit in game one of this series was a ball that were the not was the wind not blowing in might have gone out over the right center field portion of the bleachers absolutely crushed the ball but it was a fly out one and one the count to Casey who of course hitless in the series what you'd probably like to do with Casey is use newly found two seam fastball try to sink it low and away from him line drive into center field there goes the hitless streak for Casey He's too good a player to be hitless for long, and he's aboard with a two-out base hit. And here comes a one-man murderer's row and Greg Vaughn. Well, that was a high fastball that Cal tried to get in on his hands, but Casey's pretty quick. He was able to get the big part of the bat on it, drive it into center. Watch the location. And as you can see, he did get the barrel of the bat as he lined a base hit to center. So here's Vaughn. Every hit in the series, a home run. Four hits, four homers, seven RBIs. And he's climbed into the top six in the National League. In fact, he is sixth in home runs. And Farnsworth misses outside, one and oh of the count. Days like this, Tony, I imagine when you're playing with the Cubs, you'd wake up, look at the flags, and think about coming down with a bit of the wind flu. Or trying to find a sinker somewhere. Outside again, it's 2 0. This is not what you want to do with Vaughn. Because being a dead pole hitter, he knows now you have to come into him or run the risk of walking him for another hot hitter in Dimitri Young. Farnsworth off the stretch, of course. The pitch. Hop back toward us and just out of reach. And here's the homer by Vaughn. Yesterday's blast. This was a breaking ball that was out away from Vaughn. He just reached out and hit it into the seat. He is enormously strong. He's on pace for a 30 home run, 100 RBI season. And there's a rocket down the left field line. Well, he gets the hands through quickly, doesn't he? It's two and two. The last red to have a 30 homer, 100 RBI season was 10 years ago when Eric Davis did it for Cincinnati. It's a good time for Cal to use that slider. If he gets it low and away, he'll strike out Vaughn. Little dust devils blowing down the first baseline, kicking up a little chalk. A very windy day. The 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball. Got him. Vaughn chased it. And the inning is over. No runs. One hit. One man left after a half inning. It's Cincinnati nothing. And the Cubs coming up. Sean Casey, a two-out hit in the top of the first. Nothing comes of that. And here's a look at the Cubs. Pepsi starting lineup. A much 
more veteran lineup than what we've seen from Jim Ruggerman in the bulk of this series. Johnson, Morandini, and Sammy Sosa, the top three. Sammy with 58 home runs on the year. Then it's Mark Grace, Henry Rodriguez, who's been slumping in left. Jeff Blauser at short. He had a pinch homer yesterday. Jeff Reed's been throwing well. He's behind the plate. Gary Gaiety at third. Kyle Farnsworth pitches and bats ninth. The lineup for Jack McKeon in the Reds. Vaughn Cameron and Young left to right. Boone Larkin, Reese, and Casey in the infield. Eddie Taubensee behind the plate. And Pete Harnish on the hill looking for his 15th win. In this, his 29th start. Last year, he was 14-7. and seven. And they've got some guys in this lineup, namely Gary Gaetti, who's hit three home runs against him. Mickey Morandini has a couple of home runs, knocking at the door 300 lifetime. And Sammy Sosa's always hit Harnish well. Who lifetime against the Cubs is eight and five. Lance Johnson, first pitch swinging, rifles that to center field for a leadoff single. Harnish just laid that ball in there, and Lance whacked it into center pasture for a leadoff base hit, and a good start for the Cubs and. Mickey Morandini coming to call now. Pete Harnish is a high fastball pitcher, and that might not play very well here today. Lance breaks an 0 for 10 by taking the first pitch right back up the middle. Harnish signed by the Reds through the year 2000. They have a team option for his services in the year 2001. As Mickey takes the ball low, one ball, no strikes. Big news in Philadelphia. Shane Reynolds has a no hitter for the Astros through five innings of play. Houston only three hits against Paul Bird, however. I was going to say the big news is that Paul Bird has held down the Astros because he's struggled recently. One ball, no strikes to Mickey and Johnson back to first. Even better news to report no problem with the 9999 virus. Computer up and working today if you have some thoughts. Send them to us at Cubs TV at interaccess.com. And Stoney, I think there's a reason why there aren't many hits going in Philadelphia. It's raining, and they've just pulled the tarp <laughs> out, so there is a rain delay in the top of the sixth inning with the Astros batting. One ball, one strike. And right through there on the outside corner, one and two. Now, all things being even, Pete Harness will try to stay away from both the left and right hand hitters. When he comes in, he usually comes in off the plate, but he lives away. Lance a decent lead over at first. Morandini, then Sosa here in the Cubs half. And that's upstairs. Count evens two and two. Harnish making that remarkable comeback from depression. Was on the disabled list from April to August of 1997 with an insomnia and anxiety. The Reds got him as a free agent in January of 98. A little roller hit toward Reese at second. Second base one. Larkin couldn't get enough on the throw to retire Morandini. In between flip there, the ball hit rather slowly, and Larkin didn't get much on that throw, so it's a force play at second. Mickey at first with one out, and here comes Sammy. The high scoreboard camera will take a look at a slowly hit ball, and odds are you're not going to be able to turn two. Larkin up in the air, so he can't really get too much on this throw, and they cannot double Morandini. Well, Jim Bowden took a gamble on Pete Harnett, and that gamble didn't cost him a whole lot, but it certainly has paid dividends. He's won 28 games the last two years for the Reds. Last year, 7 over 500. This year, 6 over 500. And it's good to allow guys who have had success, maybe fallen on either some personal or physical hard times, to get a shot at the major leagues once again. And in the case of Pete Harnish, it's worked well. So here comes Sosa, and Sammy looks at a ball outside. 58 homers, 127 driven in. Lifetime against Harnish. Sammy hitting 314, 16 hits, and a couple of those hits home runs. One and oh, the count. We're in the first. There's a high rocket into center field. Let's see what happens with this. Vaughn comes in and makes the play. Cameron never saw the ball, but fortunately, and this is a lesson all you youngsters, if you can't pick it up, you better holler to allow one of your corner men to be able to get it. That ball went straight up in the air. Cameron lost sight of it. He yelled out for Vaughn, and Vaughn, who was tracking it all the way, was able to make the play. And he has to go all the way over to center field to make this play. 
as Cameron had no idea where that one was. So Sammy's retired for the first time in the game, and here's Mark Grace with a runner at first and two outs. Gracie, a Cub milestone yesterday, passed Mr. Cub Ernie Banks for second place in the all time team doubles list. Gray's had two two base hits, hits and scored two of our four runs in the game. Line drive up the middle for a base hit. That'll send Morandini to third. So first and third, two outs. Grace also did something during this homestand that he'd never had happen to him before. Went six games without a base hit. Now he's starting to heat things up. This one just out of the reach of Pokey Reese. And the Cubs haven't been able to do that too many times in this series. So now with runners at the corners, Henry will have an opportunity to drive home the first Cub run, maybe more. Again, Harnish loves to work away. Let's see if Henry's looking out there. Henry, too, has been slumping. He's nine out of his last 60 for the Cubs. The pitch is inside, ball one. Hey, congratulations, Kurt and Carol, on your nuptials. One and zero oh. is fouled away. One ball, one strike. Well, we want to welcome the Astros and the Phillies to our telecast today. I'm sure the guys are watching the game in Veterans Stadium with the rain coming down in Philadelphia. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Speaking to the Houston's, of course. One and one here in the first. It's two and one. The Astros three games ahead of the Reds. They're red hot playing very good baseball now. They've won six in a row. Ken Caminiti starting to hit everything in sight. And we all know about that pitching. Line right field. It'll drop for a hit. Henry drives home more and the Cubs have a one nothing lead. RBI number 83 for Henry. Harnish wanted this ball away. He didn't get it there. Watch it again. And Henry got what he wanted, which was a low fastball. He drives it into right field. Mickey scores easily. And the Cubs lead by one. So three first inning safeties by the Cubs, and that brings Jeff Blauser to the plate. Jeff at 244, eight homers, and 23 runs batted in. First and second, two outs. He pops the first pitch up and out of play right side. Want to send along congratulations to one of the beat writers for the Cubs, Jeff Vorva. Welcomed his baby daughter, Lauren Marie Vorva, into the world on August the 26th. Maggie Vorva, Jeff's wife, doing well. And TJ Vorva, the big brother, turned three on Tuesday. Everybody. Real excited. We congratulate Jeff and his family for that wonderful news. Pitch upstairs. Count evens a ball on a strike. Blauser a pinch hit homer yesterday. He and Glenn Allen Hill each with three pinch home runs for the Cubs. Giving season. Glenn Allen a little heat. The fact that big muscular sort of guy that he is. And little Jeff Blauser has tied him. 1-1. One, one. Popped up. And over the Cincinnati dugout, the wind tried to blow it back in, but it hit one of the support wires holding the screen up and popped into the seats. Thomas, he thought he might have had a play. With the wind blowing straight out, there was a chance that ball might have come back in the field of play, but it hit that very thin wire, and so Jeff gets another life. Cubs by a run here in the first. First and second, two outs, and Harnish struck him out swinging, and that retires the side. One run, three hits, two left after one. Cubs trying to spoil the Reds' party. One nothing heading to the second. Cubs get a run in the first lead, Cincinnati, one nothing as we head to. Our second inning of play. Well, some strange things have happened when the numbers on the calendar all match. May 5th, 1955, 
Giants beat the Cubs six to three. Off day on June 6th of 66, July 7th, 77. Cubs beat the Cardinals 2 0. Larry Durker, now the manager of the Astros, on the short end of that ball game. And I'm sure, Stoney, you'll never forget what happened on August 8th of 88. No, a lengthy rain delay fill, two hours and 54 minutes. But here on 9999, the Cubs have the lead. And we will hope that continues. And Dimitri Young will lead things off. Young hitting 298, 11 homers, and 43 runs driven in. Kyle Farnsworth has the lead, and there's a line drive hit to left. Henry on the run. Shy of the track has it. Young retired, one down. Again, the wind blowing out rather dramatically toward right. Have not heard the official miles per hour tally before the game. 16 miles an hour out of the west. Well, let's hope we don't suffer the same fate that the Astros and Phillies are suffering, and that is wet weather. Eddie Tobinsey bats now with the bases empty. A 301 hitter, 17 homers and 70 batted in. Reds have said they've got to take at least four out of five in this series to feel like they have a chance to continue their playoff run. They've won three of four in the series to this point. Ground ball, high hop, knocked down Morandini. Can't make a play. That ball had a lot of top spin and was hit like a bullet. Second Cincinnati hit. Mickey gets a glove on it, but when he gets to the outfield grass, he can't get his footing. Able to knock it down, then the ball does trickle away, and it goes as a base hit. So Tobinsey, who picked up a pinch hit yesterday, starting the day, and he's one for one. So the lefties or switch hitters in this game are two out of three against Farnsworth so far. And here's Cameron hitting 268, 18 homers, 58 batted in. Cameron missed a lot of time with a bad hamstring. Didn't take him long to jump right into this red lineup. Two days ago, he swung at the second pitch he saw from Cub rookie Brian McNichol and hit a two-run homer. Hit it out to right center, which is really home run alley today. That bender in for strike one. They're very happy with the trade that brought Mike Cameron over here from the White Sox. Paul Canerco going to the Sox. And Canerco's done a very good job for them. And Cameron has done a terrific job defensively for Cincinnati, and he's starting to provide some offense. So Jack McKean, a bona fide candidate for manager of the year, looking on. Chopper left side. Blouser flips to second. It's just in time. Tomlinson erased by an eyelash on a good play by Jeff at short. Two men down now as Cameron reaches on the force play. Well, if you're a hitter, here's where you get a bad break because you have a man at first base because Jeff Blouser only has one play, and that's the second. Fortunately, a catcher going down the line, and they're able to get the force out. And here's a man that's really hurt us, and he's hurt us on a lot of high fastballs, especially early in the count because Boone tries to pull early. Later in the count, he'll try to go to right center. He has a pair of home runs in the series. Boone's hitting a couple of different spots in the lineup for Cincinnati in this series. This is the first time he's hit eighth, however, against us. One ball, no strikes. Cubs leading the Reds here in the second inning. A score of one to nothing. Arnish is a decent but not a great hitting pitcher. So this isn't a bad time to send Cameron. Worst comes to worse. You get thrown out, you lead off the next inning with Boone. So Kyle better keep his eye on Cameron at first. He swiped 33 bases. And has been caught just 10 times. Reed, though, is thrown well. He's not going, and the pitch chopped up the middle. Blouser to his left. Gloves, juggles, and can't make the play. Infield hit for Boone with two outs. This ball almost gets through. And Jeff Blauser has it stick in the glove for a moment, then can't get the backwards flip. We take a look at Ray Ordonez do this all the time, and he makes it look easy. But that's a very tough play. 
And they can't get it there in time with a speedy Cameron sliding in. So now they have to deal with Harness. Who's hitting 140 for the Reds. A homer five driven in. Harnish with four two base hits on the season. A chance for him to help himself. And a real problem for the Cubs this year has been the opposition's pitchers as hitters. Almost 190 the right. batting average. Hitting 189 and that's been real surprising that Cub pitchers have had all kinds of problems with opposing pitchers. The 1-0. Chopper toward Gaiety at third in foul ground. And it's a strike for Harnish, one and one to count. Gary's looking at the wrong guy. He was looking at Ed Montague. That play was in front of the bag, and the man to look at is Kerwin Danley. He's got the call if it's between home and third. If it goes by the bag, then Montague has the call. But that ball clearly in foul territory. Gary was trying to convince him otherwise, but Harnish will have another life. We saw it particularly hurt us in the L.A. series with both Chan Ho Park and Darren Dreifert coming through with big base hits. So Kyle has got to retire Harnish and give the offense a chance. Brad Topko also a couple of hits against us in this Cincinnati series. The pitch Harnish lays off. One of their hottest hitters is the man waiting on deck and that's Pokey Reese. Harnish however will have to keep the frame alive for him to bat. Two and one. A chopper off the plate. Farnsworth will have to put in his pocket. An infield hit. Another one of them. So now the Reds have them loaded with two outs. Well, Chip, that's one of the plays that I think you have to let bounce. You've got Gaetti there. Kyle is there. Now, odds are this one is not going to bounce and go in foul territory, but you have no other shot. You can't make any play on this ball. If you let it bounce, just maybe. It takes some spin and rolls into foul territory as it is. It goes as a base hit. It keeps the inning alive. And now you've got the bases loaded for Pokey. Three infield hits by the Reds in the inning. So the base is loaded for Reese, who carries a six game hitting streak into this series finale ball game. Farnsworth off the windup in the first pitch, right through there for a strike. Cameron Boone and Harnish the Cincinnati base runners. The 0 1 outside evens the count at a ball and a strike. Look at those flags on the score. Well, what an inviting target for a hitter to hit the ball to the right side. The problem is that just about the time you try to adopt an uppercut swing you wind up popping it up or missing it. Farnsworth a peek over that glove now back to work. One and two nasty slider there. That was a good spot for it and probably a good chance to follow it up with the same pitch. That was well off the plate but Reese couldn't stop himself. So Farnsworth one strike away perhaps from ending this threat. The one two. Went with a fastball and Reese fouled it straight back. Milwaukee pounding the Diamondbacks six to one. That game now in the top of the third inning. Arizona by seven and a half games now over San Francisco. That game is Carl against Reynoso up at County Stadium. The one two. Fist it back toward us. Jeremy Brunitz has hit a home run. He has not been the same since breaking that hand for the Milwaukee team. That was a big loss for them. But he uncorked a home run today up in Brew City. And the one two. Strike three called over the outside corner. Reese froze it. Three infield hits by the Reds go to waste. Farnsworth pitches out of his first jam of the game, and he leads 1-0 after one and a half. The 
One nothing in favor of the Cubs as we head to the bottom of the second inning. Jeffrey, Gary Gaiety, and Kyle Farnsworth come a calling against Pete Harnish. Well, we want to issue a big WGN welcome to Kevin Flaherty, Christine Flaherty, Michael Carnesis, and Laura Carnesis. They're some of our WGN assistant directors today. They're in the booth. They were thrilled to see Steve Stone today. And it's also Kevin's birthday, we understand. So, Kevin, congratulations. Happy birthday. Picked a beautiful day to come to the ballpark. They were down on the field taking a look at how we did leadoff man and then the opening of the show today. So they're getting the full feel of how we do the WGN broadcast and just how difficult it really is. And they they said how can they pay you guys so little to do such a good job. We didn't have an answer so. But it's great to see them hope they have a good time today and hopefully the Cubs can spoil the party for the Reds. Jeff Reed two balls and a strike and had a great game yesterday. And those folks will be down in the truck a little bit later. Reaching into Arnie Harris's bag of Millennium Beanie Babies. Two and two. That's right. We got an advanced look at the Millennium Bears. Ah, yes. The Millennium Beanie Baby. There it is. Nice cut. Looked like Arnie's shirt yesterday. It's a fine looking bear. Popped out of play, foul. Final home stand of the 20th century. Boy, that's amazing to say. Starts Friday, September 17th. It concludes Sunday, September 26th. There are good tickets available for the Friday, September 17th game against Milwaukee. The Thursday, September 23rd game. That's a night game against the Pirates. And the Friday game against Pittsburgh as well. Saturday, September 25th, the first 20,000 fans get an all century team poster. There'll be a great pregame ceremony on Saturday as well. A lot of your familiar Cubs will be at that one. Reed inside the bag, fair for extra bases. Reed continues his torrid hitting. Jeff had a couple of hits yesterday, also threw out two men trying to steal. So he's playing some of his best baseball as a Cub in the last two games of the series. This one right down the line. Sean Casey can't get to it. So Jeff Reed knowing there is a spot to be had on this team for next year. Making a pretty good case for it. But some of the Cub greats that will be at the ballpark for that pregame ceremony on the 25th. Ernie Banks, Andre Dawson, Mark Grace, Fergie Jenkins, Andy Pathko. Ryan Sandberg, Ron Santo, Lee Smith, Sammy Sosa, Bruce Souter, and Billy Williams. We'll also have a one hour special beginning at 2 o'clock Chicago time here on WGN. So that ought to be a great, great day for baseball here at Wrigley Field. And then don't forget Sunday, September 26th, the final regularly scheduled game. This century here at Wrigley Field. The first 40,000 fans will get one of these beautiful purple Millennium Beanie Babies and a commemorative card. Compliments of our friends at Ty. Of course, the Millennium begins in the year 2001, but we'll get a jump on it with the Beanie Baby Day here at the ballpark. One ball, one strike to Gary Gaetti. Cubs leading by a run, adding or having a chance to add to that lead with Gaetti in the batter's box. There's once again the look at the Beanie Baby. Arnie rented a very big truck. So get to the ballpark early to get your Beanie Baby. One ball, two strikes. Ground ball right side. Gaetti does his job. Terrific at bat for Gary Gaetti. Got the runner to third with a ground ball to the right side. And you can believe that Boone and Casey are coming in at the corners. And now they're worried about the suicide as Gary Gaetti takes the ball the other way, moving Reed to third. 
as the Cubs know the importance of all of these early runs. So Kyle a chance to help himself. He's driven home one run in his Cubs season this year. Oh, way, a milestone yesterday in Arizona's 9-1 win over Milwaukee. Hideo Nomo recorded his 1,000th career strikeout, third fastest player in history to get to 1,000. Gave up a few home runs also. Ooh. Squeeze is on. Farnsworth got it down. It worked perfectly. The squeeze works to perfection, and the Cubs lead by two. Pretty good execution on the part of the Cubs. Gandy gets him over with a ground ball, and here comes Reed. All Farnsworth has to do is make contact and make it he does. And Kyle gets a nice hand from the crowd. He's got a two to nothing lead. Perfectly executed. The timing was exceptional. And Kyle got the bunt down. And give a gold star to Gary Gaetti for getting that runner to third. So here's Lance Johnson singled to open up the ball game for the Cubs and was forced out in that first inning. So a two nothing game. We saw some youngsters mistakes in the first couple of games of this series. Veterans have made all the plays here in this ball game. And now Harnish falling behind 3-0 the count. toward right center field Cameron and Young who wants it it's Young Cameron having all kinds of problems Tony I don't think he's seen the baseball cleanly yet the Cubs get a run on a suicide squeeze by Farnsworth and after two it's two nothing it's nine nine ninety nine and on our discover platinum payback playback today we keep with the nines theme and relive a memory from the career of good old number nine Randy Hundley he slammed one of his career 82 homers against the Mets at Shea Stadium and is one of 29 players to wear number nine for the Cubs. Number nine, Randy Hundley on 9999 is today's payback playback. And Randy will be joining me for the game tomorrow evening down in Houston. Now, how can his son have all that power and Randy manage just 82 home runs? Well, he left it to Todd. I guess. No question son about that. 41 in one year. And will probably hit 25, 28 home runs this year. Barry Larkin, the Cincinnati batter. The Reds have to be kicking themselves. Left the bases loaded in the second. And now they trail by a pair as we head to the third with Larkin, Casey, and Vaughn due against Farnsworth, who is throwing laser beams so far in the game. That one jammed shot towards short. Lauser fields the big hop. Larkin's retired. Cubs have really had his number. In this series, Larkin just two out of 19 in this series. And here are some of the guys that have worn number nine for the Cubs, including 14 catchers. Benito Santiago, one of them. Steve Swisher, a teammate of mine. So here's Sean Casey. Casey looks at a ball outside. Yosh must have it set in his head that a catcher's got to be a number nine. You catch. That's your number. Who was the catcher that didn't like to wear that single digit? Can't remember. There's a high drive deep towards center field. Lance drifting back, still going, still going. It's off the base of the wall. Casey around second. He stumbles, and now he'll have to scramble back to the bag. He thought about third, and he probably would have made it. But well, mighty Casey grounded out. Fell down. I think had Lance gotten back to the wall originally, he might have made this one, but the wind just kept taking it, and I think he underestimated how strong that wind is. 
Casey hits it high up in the air. Normally, this is a routine flyout. Now, Lance looks where he is. He reaches for the wall, and then the wind just takes it over his head. It doesn't even hit the wall. He just misjudges this one. But it goes to two base hit, the second hit for Casey. So Vaughn bats with a runner in scoring position. Most catchers don't like to wear that single number. It might have been Santiago with, with it, uh, San Diego. It was. He wanted to be 09, so you could see his number behind the strap of his catcher's gear. So here's Vaughn, 35 homers downstairs. Let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. The Ivy starting to lighten up. Some brown spots out on that Wrigley Field wall. Autumn is right around the corner and a bit of a taste of it today. And the wind is starting to freshen up a touch. 1-0. Rip towards short. Blouser had him played perfectly. He'll take the sure thing and go to first. Casey two third with two men out. Some in the stands thought Jeff should have taken a shot at third, but he wants to stay out of the big inning, and he did get the sure out. Off on at first base. Looked like he had Casey dead to rights. This ball way in front of him. He would have had him out by 15 feet. But he decides to make the long throw instead. And now a base hit scores a run where a base hit would not have before. So Casey's at third. And Young, the hitter, he flied out his first time up. Had Casey made third on that double, he might have scored on that ground ball. Might have been the key phrase. Well, also, a real bad base running play by Casey. That ground ball was hit well in front of him and normally you're going to get thrown out at third. So a break for Cincinnati. We'll see if they cash it in here. They're in the bottom of the sixth inning now in Philadelphia after a brief rain delay. Astros have broken through. They lead one nothing at Veterans Stadium. Reynolds against Bird in that game. A check of the runner at third. Now the 2-0. Three balls, no strikes. I would think you would give, with the wind blowing out, Dimitri Young the 3-0 green light. But you do have a pretty good hitter up in back of Minetti Tomlinson. We'll never know. It was nowhere near the strike zone. So Young is aboard. There is the first Farnsworth walk. And Tomlinson will hit now with men at the corners for the Reds. And two down. You normally don't have to worry about Dimitri Young running and I think they would rather have the right side open here anyway. There are two outs. If you run with Young you would pass Tobinsey to get the righty righty advantage. I think Jack McKeon wants Tobinsey to hit here. Inside Tobinsey two RBIs shy of equaling his career high of 72. Also with 17 home runs and a 300 batting average. Boy that's. That's great work for an everyday catcher in the major leagues with all the punishment and responsibility they have to handle every day. And he's been a lot more powerful this year. Last year he wound up with 11 hitting in the high 270s. So it's been a good year for him. 1 0. Line toward right. On the run, Sammy. He's got a beat on it and he's got it. And Tomlinson flies out to retire the Reds in the third. No runs, one hit. Two more Reds left. They've stranded six through three and the Cubs lead by two. Well, it's a beautiful day for a cookout. Maybe our lovely and talented AD, Kathy Curl, grab one of those hamburgers and take it downstairs to Arnie Harris here at Wrigley Field. It's 2 0 in favor of the Cubs with Morandini, Sosa, and Mark Grace scheduled against Arnish. The Reds have stranded six men on base. And Mickey grounds out on the first pitch he sees here in the Cubs half. Of the third. We want to wish Kyle Hoker and Chris congratulations on their wedding this weekend. Kyle works in the Cubs computer department, so Kyle and Chris, many happy returns. And Sammy gets his second look at the Cincinnati right hand. Thank the best long congratulations to Ray Berry, a native Kenoshan, a major leaguer, and now a member of the State Hall of Fame. You might remember him as a pitching coach with the Chicago White Sox. 
And it's a nice honor for Ray. Sammy takes a ball, one and over oh the count. Cub Scout Jim Crawford wants to send along greetings to his sister Martha Gordon, Ann Jackson, Dirt and Harmon Raspberry watching the game down in Stonewall, Mississippi. I think Sammy just missed a home run back in the first inning. And this probably will be his day. That one in the dirt. Harnish not giving him much to hit, and the crowd letting him hear it. It's 3 and 0 to Sosa. And don't think for a minute that he doesn't have a 3 0 green light. Arnish hasn't been close on the first three. Popped him up. Casey and a pokey Reese. It'll be Reese battling the wind in an over the shoulder catch, two down. You think he's starting to get a little anxious at all Steve he's not gotten a whole lot of protection in the lineup. Well it's not a question of that Chip it's just that there are pitchers that are not going to allow Sammy to beat them. Now this is ball four it's up and out of the zone we've seen Sammy swing at a lot of pitches that would have been ball four. He's just pretty much refusing to walk and the opposing pitchers are taking advantage of that they're throwing him pitches up and out of the zone down and out of the zone he's swinging at him and they invite Sammy to try to get himself out. Which he did in that at bat. And Grace sends a high fly ball into center field. Back goes Cameron. Still going back at the warning track. Can't get it. It's off the wall. Grace round second on his way to third. Again, the outfield misjudges a wind blown fly ball. Triple for Grace, his third of the year. Well, I think Mike Cameron is going to be happy to get out of this ballpark because he hasn't judged anything right today. All you got to do is move back. You can't just keep drifting with this ball and it hits again in front of the wall and he just misses it. Now you got to know the wind is blowing out a gale and Mark Grace coasting into third base. So the man who's second on the all time Cub list for doubles gets his third triple of the year. So Henry a chance to add his second RBI of the game. Runner at third with two outs. And the pitch in for a strike. It's nothing in one. 83 RBIs for Henry. He's trying to get to 100 RBIs for the year. Inside, evens the count at one and one. Ernest does have three wild pitches this year. And mistake, he got the ball down to Henry in the first inning. It cost him an RBI single. One and two. The Sosa pop up looming a little larger now as Grace triples off the wall. Had Sammy earned the walk, the Cubs might have their third run of the game. But it didn't work out that way, and it's up to Henry to drive home a run with two down here. Might have broken his back. But the wind pushing that to the warning track, and Young hauls it in. And that retires the side. The hitter is starting to get better swings. Cubs fail to score after a grace triple here in the third. It's 2 0 going to inning number four at Blustery Wrigley Field. Two nothing is our score as we go to the fourth inning. Stoney, let's see what your beloved lug nuts did. Our Illinois lottery hit at big report. Well, my lug nuts advanced. That's what they did. They win the series two to nothing. And West Tennessee in a best of five is taking a one to nothing lead. So both the Cubs farm teams hit it big for the Illinois lottery. Kyle Farnsworth took a little off on that pitch and Cameron way out in front and he's down a quick strike. The Reds loaded the bases in the second inning failed to score. They've had a man on in every inning of the game. They've stranded six and trail by two so far today after three. Nothing like a little hacky sack action. 
In fact, we had an interesting question from a big Cubs fan in Denver, Colorado, watching today. Sharon Sawyers wants to know what do sportscasters do to kill time during a rain delay? Usually we talk about every aspect of the game on an extended fill on WGN. Cameron, two and two. And then when we do go back to the studio chip we are constantly in search of more information to bring to the broadcast. That is exactly right. Never ending quest. 2 2 pitch rifle down the right field line and Cameron swung late. And stays alive 2 and 2 Houston and the Phillies tied at one after six. Arizona trailing. Six to three at Milwaukee that game only in the bottom of the fourth inning later on Montreal in San Diego the Mets in Los Angeles New York 30 games over 500 2 2 he went around and Farnsworth strikes out Cameron three Farnsworth punch outs in the game I starting to mix a lot of off speed sliders in with that short sharp breaking slider and he so far mystified the Reds. How much does a pitcher's pitching sequence change over the course of the game Steve. Well it should change a lot. I mean the first time through Kyle went almost entirely with all the hard stuff. Now he's starting to work a lot more breaking balls in. Boone sends a shot into center Lance playing deep has to gallop in makes the play there for out number two. Now is that something you plan for example the first three innings or first time and a half through the order we go strictly with fastballs or mostly fastballs or does the game situation dictate you can't approach? possibly go in with a game plan like that you have to see what's working on a given day but coming out today Kyle had a, a very explosive fastball decided to use it the first time through but then these are pretty good hitters they will pick it up so you have to go out and use something else the only man I've ever seen that changed radically from one half of the game to the other was Juan Marichal who had five different pitches. Arnish serves that ball into left center field. Johnson is there. He's got it. Farnsworth pitching very, very well. He has shut out one of the hottest hitting teams in the National League through four innings and leads by a pair at Wrigley. Lotto, that's the ticket. If a Cub player hits a homer today, write down the distance and player's name and send it to WGN. You could win round trip tickets to any Southwest Airlines destination. Well, Stoney, on a day when the wind's blowing out at a very, very high number, we haven't seen a whole lot of offense. It's a 2 0 game. Kyle Farnsworth pitching very well. He has stranded a lot of Cincinnati base runners, and the Cubs have gotten just enough offense to lead this one. Kyle learned a lot going down to the minor leagues and coming back. He learned to change speeds, he's changing location. And here's a guy three and eight out pitching a guy 14 and eight. So far Farnsworth has had the measure of harness and the Cubs have the lead. Lower portion of the Cub order is due. The top of the Cincinnati order will do will be due the, their next time around. Blouser sends a high drive to right. Dimitri Young flips the shades down and Jeff is retired four out number one. This is a big game for the Cincinnati Reds a big series for them. They said they had to win four out of five and they see that the Astros are in a one one tie in Philadelphia today. Well we'll see how Cal Farnsworth fares the third time through the order. So far he's just mystified Cincinnati. He's got great stuff today. This should be good enough stuff to win. But again with the wind blowing out this is a tough place to pitch today. One up one down now as Jeff Reed stands in. Reed doubled and scored our second run. That was back in the second. One and oh, the count. Well, our good friend Mike North from the score is at the ball game today, but he's not in the stadium. He's broadcasting from his perch. Out on the rooftops, way past the left field fair pole. Two and one the count. Just next door to the firehouse. Out on Waveland Avenue. That's probably a pretty good view. You get to see the ballpark from underneath the grandstand. Downstairs, three balls and a strike. We understand Mike's going to be celebrating a birthday in the next couple of days. And there's the gang from the score. 
It's going to be his what 55th birthday. Well I don't know if it's that much. And there they are. Good to see you folks. Hope you're having a good time today. And hey the Cubs are winning two nothing. Maybe those folks were good luck charm out there. Reads aboard with a one out walk. I'm sure it's not very windy up there. No not at all. And here's Gary Gaetti. Gaetti grounded out to second, but it was a, a good out. Broken bat. Another ground ball. Reese handles that one. The bat went farther than the baseball there. And Aaron Boone calls for time, and Tom Gamboa will clean up the infield as the shards of lumber. Are scattered across the infield. Well, now let's see if Kyle can hit himself into another run. It was his suicide that plated the second run in the second inning. So Gary left with just the handle of the bat. Hard to get the ball by Pokey in that infield. But on the play, Jeff Reed moves into scoring position. Suicide squeeze for Farnsworth worked to perfection. He's the man that. Scored Reed. It's a rope to right center field. Young, though, got a good jump. He's under it and has it, and the inning is over. No runs, no hits. One man left. We go to the fifth inning. The top of the Cincinnati order is due. They trail by just a pair. Detroit was last night. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to St. Louis for $30 when you travel September 1st through September 30th. You are now free to move about the country. Chevrolet Gary Show. Premiering Monday at 6.30 and 10.30 on WGN. Windy day at Wrigley Field, 2-0 in favor of the Cubs, but the third time through now for Cincinnati. That means Reese, that means Larkin, and that means Sean Casey. Despite that, though, Kyle Farnsworth has pitched very, very well so far. Here's a kid that's given up 25 home runs in 108 innings, and the Reds have been kept in the ballpark, and they're the hottest-hitting home run team in the major leagues right now with 22 of them in their last six games. Well fortunately there's only three left hand hitters in the lineup. And I think that works to the advantage of Kyle whose slider is getting a whole lot better. But he's got to deal with the top of that order. And you can save yourself a lot of grief in this fifth inning if you can retire Pokey Reese at the top. He's retired him twice. Retired Larkin twice and that's fortunate because Casey has two hits. So these beautiful shots you see from our terrific WGN crew. Our thanks to them for another great season of baseball coverage here in 1999. Arnie Harris at the helm in the truck. With some help downstairs, Christine Flaherty. We introduced you to her earlier today. She's already mastered the talkback switch. Brown ball hit sharply to third by Reese. The toss across in time, and Reese is 0 for 3 today. Well, if you can get the ball on the ground in a game like this, you're going to go a long way toward picking up a W. There's only been one real well hit fly ball and that was off the bat of Casey in the third inning. That's the only thing close to a home run. So Barry Larkin 0 for 2. Larkin just 2 for 19 in this series and a close game that tends to scare you just a bit. He has gone 71 games without a home run as we mentioned. Of course his role has changed he was always a run producer in the middle of the Cincinnati lineup but now with Reese leading off Larkin has to be a lot more patient and a lot more efficient with the way he approaches his at bats. Well it comes have been able to get inside on him but now Kyle has fallen behind 2 and 0 and usually guys will look for the ball in in this situation. That's chopped and again it rolls foul two balls and a strike to Larkin. The Reds, if they go down to defeat today, will lose game number 1,000 in the all-time history between the Reds and the Cubs. They're 972 and 999 against us. Two and one. 
High fly hit to right. Sammy dead in his tracks now back a few steps at the edge of the track. Puts away Larkin. He's old for three. Baseball's first pro franchise back in 1869. Ernie Harris tells us that when Custer was having a tough time with that Indian starting rotation, the Cubs were playing the Reds that day. Ernie, of course, directed that battle. Check swing by Casey over the mound. Mickey in. Up, across, in time. That's the one weakness in Casey's game. He does not run particularly well. Farnsworth is through five. He's retired seven straight. He leads by two. The resistance at 5.30 on WGN, Chicago's WB. Well, the Cubs have the top of their order due now as we head to the fifth inning. Kyle Farnsworth, a five-hit blanking of the Reds. As Johnson, Morandini, and Sosa go to work against Pete Harnish. And Pete takes, or Pete delivers a ball upstairs to Lance, who's one for two today. Kyle has been terrific through five innings because we can't tell you how difficult a day this is to pitch. And Farnsworth, who wasn't known as a man who threw a lot of ground balls early, has come back in his second stint with the Cubs and gotten a whole lot tougher. Well, he's got five ground ball outs. Remember in that second inning, the three hits he did surrender to the Reds, those were all infield hits. So he has done very, very well today. Still a ways to go, however, and two runs against this Cincinnati team is not a great margin. So let's see if we can get a few more here. Lance grounds to Casey at first. Sean will take the play himself. And Lance is retired here in the fifth inning. One up, one down for the dandy little glove man, Mickey Morandini. Astros and the Phillies tied at one in the eighth inning. The Astros have their leadoff man, Jeff Bagwell, on with nobody out. And the heart of the order due at Veterans Stadium. Mickey's been trying to pull that outside pitch, and so far he's played Pepper with Pokey Reese at second. Take that outside pitch up the middle, Mick. He pulls it. And Casey, another good play. Another unassisted put out, two up, two down. That kid's going to be, if he's not already a superstar, he can really, really hit. And he's a terrific guy. When you consider, Chip, that he's really just at the beginning of what should be a very productive career, you can understand why they're so excited about him in Cincinnati. Well, you Sammy, can, another cheer. You can certainly understand why they're so excited about Sammy right here in Chicago. Big contingent of friends and fans from his homeland are here, hoping that he can take advantage of the wind and power his 31st home homer out of the ballpark today. And there's the group. Hope they're enjoying the game in our WGN skybox this afternoon. And Harnish delivers. A quick strike. Sammy is fly to left and popped to second in the game, so he's over two. Fifty-eight home runs and 127 batted in the 0-1 pitch. Swung. There's a line drive hammer straight away center. No doubt about it. Number 59. the happy happiest the Republicans have been in quite some time but they're the Dominican Republicans as Sammy hits 59 and drives in 128 and he got it up and out in center field Harness tried to throw it on the outside corner got too much of the plate and we've told you when you miss Sammy does not miss now Grace bounces a ball foul a very taxing cut 
by Sosa. 59 home runs. He's one away from baseball immortality. The sign changed again, and he's going to have at least one more crack at this red team this afternoon. Finally, somebody hits it over the fence on one of the windiest days we've seen in a long time. That one almost made the second tier of the bleachers. Cameron took a couple of steps and realized that ball was going to rocket out of the park. So Sosa one homer away from becoming the first man in baseball history with 60 home runs in consecutive seasons and it was a no doubt about it bomb. Well you see where Tobinsey wants it and unfortunately for Harnish he got it over the inner portion of the plate and how far did it fly. 465 happy feet. Amazing. So Harnish surrenders his 22nd home run. He trails by three now. And so far Kyle Farnsworth has shown no signs of bending. Well Harnish missed his spot by about a foot and it cost him a prodigious home run. Grace breaks his back. Fly ball right center field. That's going to drop for a hit. So Grace three for three today. He is really starting to pick it up. Remember he had that horrific slump. But two singles and a triple now and the damage coming with two outs and just as Sosa homers Ken Caminiti has homer a two run shot for the Astros who now lead three to one in Philadelphia in the eighth inning. The race for the most hits this decade. Grace has leapfrogged ahead of Palmero by a pair. And that's an honor that Grace really wants. Palmero's had some physical problems, and Mark Grace can take advantage of that. And he'll have to do it on the artificial surface in Houston and Cincinnati as the Cubs go on the road for six. Way inside to Henry. Swung at a ball over his head. You can see how windy it is. Our camera crew try to hang on in the blustery gale at Wrigley Field, and even with the wind blowing so briskly out, that would have been a home run on any day for Sosa. That was absolutely crushed. Another bloop shot into shallow right. Reese out battles the wind. Another terrific play. By Gold Glove candidate Pokey Reese. But the story of the day Sosa hits number 59. He adds to the Cub lead. Bang! It's 3 0. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago Cubs and may not be reproduced nor retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. <laughs> it's 3-0 in favor of the Cubs as we head to our sixth inning. Vaughn Young and Top and Seer do in a three nothing Cub lead. Well we got to have some fun. We're not up too many times this late in the game. This is true. But Farnsworth has pitched a terrific game. Vaughn has struck out and grounded out and he looks inside at ball one. Well you'd like to get Vaughn out before the two left handers Young and Tobinson. And this inning shapes up to be the toughest for Kyle who just breezed through the fifth inning and he's got a three run lead. Vaughn's bat has been popping so an interesting mano a mano matchup here. Jack McKeon looking out at that board yet hasn't seen that Houston has the lead at Philadelphia. Two balls and a strike.
They're here from Oklahoma City. Watching the Cubs and Reds do battle. Two balls and a strike. A chopper hit high in the air toward third. Gaetti unloads. Close play. Not in time. Fawn, an infield hit. That's four of them for the Reds in this game. And look at Mark Grace. Well, that's the first hit by Greg Vaughn in the series that has not left the ballpark. And it's awfully hard in front of home plate. This ball bounces up high. Vaughn with surprising speed for a big man. Beats the play at first. So not a real good beginning to the sixth inning. So Young stands in. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. 3 nothing in favor of the Cubs. The Reds have been their own worst enemies. They've stranded six men in this game. Including the bases loaded back in the second inning. Father Ryan along with Peter Nolan here from Maryville Academy enjoying the game today. I pop left side. Gaetti on the run near the tarp. Can't make a play. It's into the seats. And out of play for a strike. Well, Frank and Amy are here from Pittsburgh. Big Cubs fans hoping to see Sosa hit home run. Sammy has complied. And Dan Kuttner is at the ball game. Wants to say hello to his dad. Missed the game. He's hospitalized. Hopefully he'll be feeling better. Sammy's made everybody feel better with a long home run. Back in inning number five. I know Jack McKean wants to send long best wishes to his wife. He'll be getting home soon. I know she's looking on today. Jack, very concerned about you, but happy that you're feeling well. The 0 1 skips up there. Good. Stop by Reed. Well, a very sad story on the wire today, Steve. Catfish Hunter has succumbed to Lou Gehrig's disease. He passes away at the age of 53. We understand. And Catfish apparently passed away at his home in Hertford, North Carolina. So our sympathies go out to him. Line down the right field line and out of play. Five straight 20 win seasons with the A's and Yankees. Pitched a perfect game. Won a Cy Young Award. First multi millionaire ball player. And of course, a Hall of Fame. And there he is, the great catfish hunter. <laughs> Chopper up the middle. Blouser makes a basket play, another infield hit. I'll tell you what, for a team that's been hitting the long ball, these guys are staying alive by hitting it safely on the infield. That's five of them now well we've seen the very hard in front of home plate and with a pretty good sinker going for Kyle Farnsworth the Reds are just pounding this ball into the ground never seems to come down by the time it does there's really nothing you can do with it so now two on nobody out for a bona fide home run threat in Eddie Tobinsey however if you can throw the ground ball Tobinsey is an inviting double play target. He's grounded into just seven of them this year in the bullpen up and going for Cincinnati. Five infield hits by the Reds today. That's got to be maddening as a pitcher on the mound. You feel like you make a pretty good pitch and they just hit a perfect spot. Well you are making good pitches but you're not pitching in good luck so maybe he'll get a break here. Off the end of his bat toward third. Guidey steps on the bag and could not unload. But he does get the force play over at third base. I think that's got to be two, and I'm not sure why Gary Gaetti didn't make the throw. I'm not sure if he caught a bad step, might have turned his foot. But this looked like it's going to be two when Tobinsy squibs it off the end of the bat. Gary's thinking about two, but right there it looked like he might have stumbled. And so the Reds are going to get another out here. There should be two out man at second. Instead, there's one out and two on. And Mike Cameron, the hitter. Cameron with 18 home runs on the year. He reached on a force out and has struck out. First and second, one away now. As Cincinnati tries to come back in a 3-0 Cub game. Ball one outside. 
Finds he's pitched into and out of trouble all afternoon today. Uh-oh, 2-0 the count. Aaron Boone waiting on deck, and then the pitcher's spot. That's why the pen getting busy for Cincinnati. And they've got Mark Sweeney, one of the premier pinch hitters in this game. He's got a couple of pinch hits in this series, and he'll probably be the man called upon by Jack McKean, assuming the inning stays alive as Scott Sullivan loosens. 2 0. Oh. Now it's 3 0 oh and a chant from Reed. He's been pretty economical. He has struck out three men, walked only one, and right around the mid 70 pitch mark into inning number six. You still have to be careful because the jet stream is out to right center, and you figure to try to stay away from Cameron here. Ball gets away from the bullpen, so that'll hold things up for a bit. Aaron Boone in the on deck circle and then if the inning is still alive undoubtedly Mark Sweeney three and oh the count he took all the way three and one now I want to send congratulations to Andrew Chatham and Misty Beanland on their recent wedding those greetings come from John McDonough and Cubs marketing department. Three to nothing is the score, but the lead in jeopardy here. Three and one. Rifled foul, three and two. He's not gotten many good swings yet. Well, if Kyle has confidence in that slider, this is a real good time to throw it. And Farnsworth with three punch outs in the game. This would be a great spot for number four. If you get it on the ground, got to turn it quickly because this man can fly too. The 3 2 pitch is on the way. Swung hit high in the air, left center field, pretty deep. Johnson has a play, however. There's the catch. The runner at second is tagging. That's Young. He'll head into third, first and third with two men out. Good play by Johnson to throw the ball in towards second. Keep that force play in line here in the sixth inning. Cameron flies out, and now it's up to Aaron Boone. He has an infield hit, and he's also flied out today. This is where you want to be careful on the first pitch because that's what Boone is usually geared up for. Where it took a little off and missed with it. One ball, no strikes. If you get to the ball game early, when the Reds are in town on Aaron Boone in uniform, he does one of the great impersonations of Mark Grace on the infield of all time. When he stands out on the diamond, his hands on his hips with the glove, he's got the head cocked exactly how Grace. I mean, it's a mirror image. In fact, Gracie was saying. That's a better version of me than me. Two balls, no strikes. Three and oh. Now Harnish is in the on deck circle, but I would imagine that is merely a ploy here. Well, they'll probably send out, if you don't get Boone, they'll send out Demerit to tell him about Sweeney if it is going to be him. In there for a called strike. Chopper toward third and over Guyani's head into left field for a hit. Young scores. 
And Tobins, he stops at second. Another bad break. A lot of high hoppers off that packed dirt in front of the home plate area. And Cincinnati's on the board. It's a three to one game. RBI number 62. As this one takes the high hop, Gary backs up but cannot come up with it. And it is indeed going to be Mark Sweeney. So the Reds finally cashing in with five infield hits in this game. Get a chopper just over Gaiety's glove at third. That scores Young with the first Cincinnati run. Now they're at first and second with two outs and Mark Sweeney the batter. Sweeney's average up to 421 as a pinch hitter, eight for 19 with a couple of homers and six driven in. Both base hits that he's gotten in this series have come to left field. And with the wind blowing dead across now to the right field corner, it would probably be best to try to keep the ball away from him. So the Reds are on the board here in inning number six. Sweeney in the batter's box. Arnish's day is done. He worked five innings. Giving up three runs. Walked one man. Struck out one man. And gave up seven hits. The pitch is lined up the middle into center field for a hit. That's going to score Tobinsey. It's a 3-2 game. Sweeney with another pinch hit. Drives home the Reds catcher. First and second now. Two outs. It's a 3-2 game. And here comes Jim Riggleman. He just wants to settle down Kyle Farnsworth, who was brilliant through five. They haven't hit the ball all that hard here in the sixth inning. But they've hit it in some good spots. And so now as the bullpen starts to get loosened up, the Cubs find their three-run lead down to one. It's a slider on the first pitch. Most pinch hitters are geared up for that first pitch. And Sweeney with his third pinch hit of the series drives home yet another run and for him that's his seventh as a pinch hitter and his ninth pinch hit and so the cup bullpen starts to get busy Rodney Myers from the right side Felix Heredia from the left side and Pokey Reese will become the seventh red to hit in this sixth inning Reds with nine hits five of them on the infield not many of them hard hit at all but they all count and they've scored two in this Sixth inning. Well, we got a birthday party in the press box. Well, Sharon Panazzo's birthday will be when we're on the road, so they decide to celebrate today. One ball, no strikes to Pokey Reese. Chopper foul, one and one. We've reached the three o'clock hour here in Chicago. The Cubs' three nothing lead has been cut to one, three to two. And let's pause quickly for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN Chicago. Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at the ballpark. It's three to two Cubs. The Reds have been winning lately with the long ball. They've won two runs with little baseball so far today. And the pitch rifled toward right. Grace near the Reds bullpen. He has a tick off his glove as he slams into the wall in foul ground. Well, the wind was taking that ball away from him. That would have been a miraculous play had he been able to come up with it. Mark Grace all the way down the line the wind pushing this ball away from him he knows how close he is and he can't come up with it Gabe White getting out of his way not really much of a chance on that one so now Pokey who hasn't had the ball out of the infield will have another shot but he's down one and two and he has been a real problem for us to handle atop this Cincinnati order 0 for three today with a six game hitting streak working in this ball game. Two runs on four hits for the Reds so far, and now the one-two pitch to the Reds' second baseman. 
Ah, pop up right side. Farnsworth ought to be out of it. Morandini flips down the glasses. He's got it. And the inning is over. The Reds, though, get two more infield hits. They get their first two runs on four total hits in the sixth. We go to the bottom half. It's the Cubs now leading by a run, three to two. Sorry. For the great taste that will fill you up and never let you down. Paper or plastic? Paper. Make it a Bud Light. Guys, need a receipt? Coming this fall. Cubs lead of three has been trimmed to just one as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Cubs fans, gather up a group of 50 of your closest friends and receive a half-price discount for select games in September. Call the Cubs group sales office at 773. 404 Cubs for more details. Hurry because seat availability is limited. Scott Sullivan takes over for Pete Harnish here in the bottom half of inning number six. Sullivan at four and three, a fine 289 ERA on for the 67th time. And he's been a busy man. He's a side wheeling right hander. And with one out, he will go to the century mark in innings. Sullivan worked the first two games of the series, a scoreless inning. On Monday, an inning and a third with one hit and one walk in game one of the doubleheader Tuesday. So he should be pretty well rested. And Blouser fouls it away into the upper deck. Fine catch by a fan sitting in the second row. Gentleman didn't even spit out his lollipop. So the count one and two to the Cubs shortstop, Jeff Blouser. Breaking ball is pulled foul and out of play. They go to the ninth inning in Philadelphia now. Astros leading the Phillies three to one with Biggio Spires and Bagwell do for the Strohs. That means Billy Wagner perhaps in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Strike three call of the in outside corner. Blouser not too sure about that one. He goes down on strikes for the second time in the game in the first by Sullivan this afternoon. It's a good slider on the outside corner from the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera. We'll take a look at the pitch that's just off the corner, but good enough, says Kerwin Danley. One up, one down now for Jeff Reed. He's been on base twice. He's doubled, scored, and walked. There's a ball high. Nice sized crowd on hand today at the ballpark. The Cubs have gone over the 2.4 million mark in attendance already. Just 13 home games left. Three to two is our score. Back to the screen by Jeff. It's two and one. The other races of interest, the American League wild card is a great race. Boston leads Oakland by three games, Toronto by five and a half, Seattle by eight and a half. Reed ground ball through the hole right side for a hit. Reed's two out of two. The other great race in the American League is the race for the best record. The Indians have the best record by just one game over New York. And by two over Texas, but Texas got right back into the thick of things with some great baseball lately. And that's really a, a good race to win because you've got home field advantage throughout the playoffs. That'll come in handy. Here's Gaetti. He's tapped out to second twice. And that one rolled foul for a strike. All the other division races, with the exception of the Central and the NL East, 
pretty much decided I would think New York's not going to fall to Boston you wouldn't think there's six and a half games up Cleveland has won the central already Texas by eight and a half over Oakland in the AL West and he sends a drive hammered toward left but playable Vaughn puts it away there's out number two the wind has shifted somewhat it's blowing across now so it's going to hold that ball up and left and take it out in right center as you see it blowing across and in the National League West Arizona by seven and a half games over the Giants. Runner at first, two down. Farnsworth the hitter. A sacrifice squeeze in the second. And a fly out to right. Arizona's coming back in Milwaukee. They trailed big in that ballgame. It's now 7 6 in the sixth. Two and oh, the count. You would have expected with that Milwaukee pitching staff that Arizona would have a good shot at him. Well, they fell behind by a big margin early. But Milwaukee's had a hard time getting people out. Steve Finley's driven home a couple of men after hitting three home runs last night. Damian Miller with two RBIs as well. Finley hit another home run today, by the way. He's got 30 on the season. Bad for a guy with a bulging disc who's already taken at least two injections into that spine to be able to allow him to play. Yeah, Jeremy Burnett's in his 29th, Marquise Grissom his 15th for the Brew Crew. Two and two to Farnsworth. Looping line drive caught by a recent second. Good play. And the inning is over. He's my gold glove winner at second base, and the Cubs are thwarted in inning number six. We go to the seventh. Larkin, Casey, and Vaughn do in a 3 2 Cub game. Victim. Hart Kelly's Saturday at 3 on WGN. Well, it's great to see the lovely wives of. Rodney Myers and Scott Sanders at the ball game today. Gary Guidi's bride in the background there as well. They've seen a good ball game. Cubs lead 3-2. And Stoney, here's our upcoming schedule brought to you by the new Pepsi AC Chewables. Friday night at Houston, right here on WGN. Again on WGN on Sunday as we take on the Astros for three in the dome. And then it's on to Cincinnati on Tuesday. And that's the upcoming schedule for the new Pepsi AC Chewable. Tomorrow's probables, John Lieber in hard throwing Scott Ellerton. Randy Huntley will be kind enough to fill in for Stoney tomorrow. Saturday, a national game. Then Sunday, Steve Traxel against Chris Holt in the series finale. And then it's off indeed to Cincinnati. Barry Larkin leads things off against Farnsworth. The two, three, four hitters do for the Reds. They've gotten just about every conceivable break in this ballgame offensively. Five infield hits among their nine total, but they've scored only twice. One of the reasons why Kyle's been able to hold them to two runs, he's completely subdued Reese and Larkin at the top. 0 for 7 between them. And this is a big out. And only one walk for Farnsworth in the game, too. Lined out of play by Larkin. The count, one ball, two strikes. If you tune in late, you miss seeing Sammy Sosa crack number 59. That came in the fifth. But don't fret, folks. He's coming up in the seventh. Two and two to Larkin. Get Ayala and Heredia throwing in the bullpen just in case Cal runs into trouble. Larkin off the end of his bat, and Farnsworth's going to throw him out. Good play and a good pitch. Larkin 0 for 4. He does not look particularly successful so far. He's just feeling for the ball. This one out away, and that's not the Barry Larkin that we've known over the years. 
He's having a real struggle at the plate. By the way, our guest conductor for the seventh inning stretch will be former Cubs second baseman Glenn Beckert. He had a terrific Cub career, and he was Ron Santos' roommate for many years, so it should be a most interesting interview when Mr. Beckert joins us. Gold Glove winner. And he, like so many of those Cubs in the late 60s, had a big bat. Sean Casey, the batter, one ball, one strike. Casey, two out of three today, a single, a double, a ground out, snapping an 0-4-11 slump. They got him from the Indians organization for Dave Burba. And that has turned out to be a very, very good deal for Cincinnati and a pretty good deal for the Indians, who year in, year out, still search for that starting pitching. Well, Burba at 13 and 7 this year is putting together a good year. But Casey will be around for a long time. That caught the outside corner. Casey thought that was a ball, but you won't hear him argue. Another rain delay in Philadelphia as they go to the bottom of the ninth inning with the Astros in front, three to one. Well, maybe if it's a lengthy rain delay, we can beat Houston to Houston. That just missed. Farnsworth really working the corners well today. And he's looking like a young man to me, Steve, that is really starting to learn how to pitch a little bit up here. He's pitched out of some pretty big jams this afternoon. Three balls and two strikes. He lost Casey, a one-out walk. Only the second issued by Farnsworth, but that represents the tying run. And here comes slugger Greg Vaughn. Mo Vaughn is this man's cousin, by the way, if you didn't know that. Greg, a pretty good power hitter, too. He's hit 35 home runs, driven in 94, and today is one for three. That one hit, the only hit in this series he has had that has not been a home run. Cub fans on the edge of their seats. That was Kyle's fiance. So she's on the edge of her seat, perhaps a little more than everybody else. And I think she has a look of concern knowing that to get out of the inning, you have to go by Vaughn, and if he doesn't hit into a double play, Dimitri Young. Three to two, Cubs lead. Super outing for Farnsworth so far. The pitch. Swung on, there's a drive, and just like that, Cincinnati has the lead out on the wavelet. Greg Vaughn with six hits in the series, five of them home runs, and the Reds lead by a run four to three. Ninety six driven in on the thirty sixth home run and Cal Farnsworth who had been ahead since the first inning finds himself for the first time behind and that walk to Casey just as damaging as this home run as he tries to go inside from the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera you can't get it in there to Vaughn he's just too quick and too strong. And the Reds for the first time today have the lead. So Dimitri Young stands in. Young has a single. He has scored a run, and that ball grounded towards second. Morandini handles the funny hop, throws to first in time. Two men down, and we will bid adieu to Greg Vaughn most happily after this game, but we got to face him three more times at uh, Cincinnati Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I just don't think that you can get that fastball in, especially around belt high. The Cubs have tried it consistently in this series, and consistently he's just hit the ball out of the park. He's not going to hit for a high average. But when you miss middle in, he just hits it a mile. Tobin see the batter, and he looks at a strike. You know, it is an odd stat to look at. When you see Vaughn's numbers, you think 35 home runs, now 36, 96 driven in. He's hitting 230, for crying out loud. Thomas, he dumps that ball into shallow left field, and he's aboard with two men out. Well, the run producers, Chip, you don't worry about the batting right. average, and Greg Vaughn is a run producer, always has been. And as you see, a short, quick, very powerful stroke. 
And that wind now has shifted. Unfortunately, the wind might have shifted a little too late because it's starting to blow in toward the red dugout, but gone strong enough where it really didn't matter very much. So Cincinnati has grabbed the lead four to three. We're in the top half of the seventh inning. Mike Cameron, the hitter, he is 0 4 3 today. The Reds now with 23 home runs in their last seven games. Well, Kyle had done such a good job of keeping the ball in the ballpark. That's the 26th he's given up. And they will go home with these Reds. They'll try to fatten up on the Marlins for four. Then they'll welcome us to town. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All three of those games, night games. And there is Scott Williamson. We haven't seen him in the series. We most likely will see him today. He has had some tendonitis problems, but he is making a strong bid for Rookie of the Year out of that Cincinnati pen, a pen that has racked up the best ERA and the lowest opponent's batting average of any bullpen in the major leagues this year. A Greg Vaughn two run homer with one out in the seventh inning is the difference to this point and be careful with Cameron three and oh in at the knees for a strike three and one the count I'd like to see Mark Grace get behind Tobinsey here. This is a guy that has not been successful on a stolen base and he's holding him close at first he's going to give him much of an angle and anything shot through the right side. Three one. And there's ball four. Two are on, two are out. And I think that's going to do it for Farnsworth. They're going to go with Ayala, who's going to come in the game against Boone. And what was so promising a performance by Kyle Farnsworth will find him not able to win this, and hopefully the Cubs can get him off the hook for the loss. But I take a lot of encouraging signs from this ball game for Farnsworth. He's really learning how to pitch. He was in trouble all day long had the lead through six the crowd gives him a nice ovation the young man is starting to learn his lessons well. He learned a lesson about Greg Vaughn don't go up and in on him because he'll make you pay the two run home are the difference in the game Farnsworth departs trailing for three Bobby Ayala against Aaron Boone that matchup comes your way next. You know we have we've been together for the Dominican Republic come share our treasures. Well, Kyle Farnsworth was real solid through six, but the walk to Casey and the mistake to Greg Vaughn has cost him the lead in this ball game. But Farnsworth turning in one of his better performances of the year, learning out of that Wrigley Field mound. He departs, leaves two on, two outs, and Bobby Ayala on to try to bail him out here in the top of the seventh inning. Ayala pitched in the ball game yesterday and threw two innings, struck out three, and that was it. He hit. Pokey Reese there you look at the numbers but as a Cub he's been pretty tough he's going to be on for the fourth time four innings no hits no runs no nothing three strikeouts and he's got to get Kyle Farnsworth and the Cubs out of this inning without any further damage the Reds have taken the lead for the first time but you've got to get by Aaron Boone who's two for three and again it's a one run game and the Cubs will have the top of their order Johnson Morandini and Sosa do in the bottom half of this seventh inning but remember they have the best bullpen in baseball so one run is about all you want to be able to give Jack McKeon squad to work with Boone out in front of the off speed pitch and Reed might have been crossed up on that play and there's strike one that's a veteran pitch from Ayala as you mentioned Boone a dead fastball hitter on the first pitch they took a little off and he missed it by plenty looked like he threw him the split finger and he swung right over the top of it Taubensee and Cameron are aboard the Reds have just clubbed us in this series Greg Vaughn with five home runs against us in the five game series and boom nearly sat down he swung so hard still raining in Philadelphia where the Astros will try to finish off the Phillies it's three one 
Heading to the bottom of the ninth in favor of the Astros. The pitcher due up next for the Reds, but first the 0-2 is inside for a ball. Well, Boone will expand that strike zone and a good split finger down in the dirt. Get a real good chance of getting it. One two squib toward first grace handles that steps on the bag getting over the Greg Vaughn home of the difference Four three Cincinnati. Four three side score we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning new pitcher Gabe White faces the top of the Cub order it's a four three Cincinnati ball game. And we're proud to be joined by Glenn Beckert former second baseman of the Cubs with a stirring rendition of take me out to the ball game. You don't know how scary that is. <laughs> Well, you did a much better job than your old roommate, Ron Santos. I appreciate that, Skip. You know, I've been asked not to sing many times, but never asked to sing. Well, before we get into your career, I got to ask you, what kind of a roommate was Ron Santo in your days as Cubs? Well, he was he was an excellent roommate as long as he got his way. <laughs> well, some things have never changed. And he was in a league five years before I arrived, so uh, I went along with the program. And there they are, though. Roommates with the Cubs. Ron, of course, third baseman. You at second base. You must have had some great memories playing here at Wrigley Field. This place is awesome. Great memories of being a Cub and wearing that Cub uniform. Just one. Anything in your mind stand out as you look back and reflect on your great career here? Uh, no, they just walking in and seeing. You have so many generic parks in baseball now, and to come to Wrigley Field, it, it's a happening. Double play ball from Morandini, and the Reds smooth as silk. Two down. Look like you and Pokey Reese out there turning that double play. Oh, do I wish uh, to turn back the clock. I just want to live long enough till we, uh, <laughs> to, to, we to see this same day in a World Series. You're not the only one. Pa. I know you've got some friends who are watching this game, too, that were cheering you on. For All my stretch. friends down there at Mulligan's and Rotunda at the golf courses. Uh, I hope I didn't embarrass myself, and I'll see you soon. How come you look so much younger than Ron Santo? Steve, I always did like you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Last out of the no-hitter. Remember this? Kenny Oldsman on the mound. And ground ball. You weren't real sure on that one, Beck. You side saddled that little bit. All as I know, he's Hank Aaron in about four years hit me two ground balls. He happened to pick that day to hit me the last out of a no-hitter, but Unfortunately, I stumbled it over to first base. We had, you always had those great hands. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's so wonderful coming here. I, it's happening. And what's amazing is, as you get around to see all the Cub fans over the country and now international, uh, it's just tremendous. Scott Williamson's going to be the new pitcher. Gabe White leaves the game with two outs here in the seventh inning Glenn I know you love the game of baseball you love watching the Cubs play we're seeing an era of offense that's maybe unmatched in the history of the game once again all the home run balls that are being hit nowadays how many of these guys would be hitting 30 40 50 home runs back well, in your era in the sixth skip the game has changed uh, I think the hitting and the strength of the young hitters that uh, the wrapping of the ball tighter in the shorter ballparks is all added up to where the pitchers are at a disadvantage now. I believe the owners wanted uh, more action in the game, uh, so they lowered him on. I was talking with Ronnie. I think you might have to give the pitchers a break uh, and raise that mound somewhat. By raising it 12 inches, you're going to give a little fairness and help for the pitcher, uh, and also it'll, it'll cut down on the length of the ball games, which I think are starting to run too long. And in your era too, if a guy hit 25 or 30 home runs, he was a prodigious home run hitter. Now, if a guy well, hits 25 not, home runs, that's almost nothing. That's what a, a, a punch and Judy hitter hits now, <laughs> like myself. Well, no punch and Judy hitter in the batter's box now. Sammy Sosa hit number 59 back in the fifth inning for the Cubs. That made it a three to nothing game. Unfortunately, the Reds have scored four unanswered runs and have a one run lead. That's why Williamson is in the game, the hard throwing right hander, his first appearance in this series, but 50. Sixth appearance for the year and an ERA below two. 
And this guy, you can just see why, Stoney, he is so tough to hit. Almost that Louis Tiot type delivery turns his back on you, hides that baseball, and then boom, it's on you. Well, you want to get him in a position where he has to throw you a fastball because his slider to right handers is close to unhittable. But he has a very hittable fastball, even though he throws it awfully hard. One ball, no strikes to Sammy Sosa. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, Glenn Beckert at the ballpark, and the pitch. Bad missed outside. 2 0. Oh. This is an amazing story, is it not? Watching this guy. It is. I was, I was just looking. Sammy might have more home runs than Cub victories this year. He does. 59 to 56. That's never happened before, by the way, in the history of baseball. The 2 0. Oh. Two and one. The closest man to do that, Glenn, was Wally Berger. In 1935, he had 34 home runs. The Boston Braves won 38 games. And Babe Ruth was the number two home run hitter on that team with six. If you can believe that. That's a mark I don't think anybody expected Sosa to be chasing this year. More homers than Cub wins. On paper, this team looked like it was going to be one that would be competitive. It hasn't worked out that way, unfortunately. And the 2 1, way outside, 3 and 1. You know, he hasn't been around on that mound for a while, and so you'd have to think his control would be a little suspect. You know, he doesn't want to walk Sammy representing a tying run. You got the two left handers due up in Grace and Rodriguez. So Sammy's got to look for a fastball here. I don't think he's going to be able to hit that slider. Let's see if he gets it. Sosa one for three today. The stretch by the rangy right hander and the pitch. Chase ball four. He's been doing that a lot. Yeah, Sammy's refused to walk, even representing the tying run. He swings at pitches up and out of the zone. You know that he's trying to tie it up with one swing of the bat. And he should be standing in first base. So he helps out the pitcher with that delivery. He's shooting for history right here. Nobody in the history of the game has hit 60 homers in back to back seasons. Sammy's one swing away from that perhaps. The 3 2 who is outside. He's not going to swing at that one. And there's ball four. Crowd boos, but that represents the tying run and Mark Grace the hitter. And Grace three out of three today. First walk. For Williamson. This guy's got 10 wild pitches this year, and you would have to believe most of them would be on that slider. Gracie with a perfect day. Two singles and a triple. He got his doubles out of the way yesterday, so in the series, he's the homer away from the cycle. One here would put the Cubs in front. Beck, does the ballpark look the same to you now as it has for so many years? It just it's the same. Uh, looks dynamite. It's just so many memories get walking in here. Uh, Ball one to Grace down. And it seems like it was yesterday and what was it, 30 some years. Well, so. you look like you could still go out there and play a little bit. Uh, looks are deceived, you <laughs> believe me. Steve can verify that. You know, you know about that, right, Steve? <laughs> well, all our careers seem like it was just a short time ago. It really wasn't. The one one. I think he really start appreciating as you get older of being having the opportunity to play in the major leagues. I might sound like a little kid but it is something and uh, I guess you go through your whole life having that little kid in your heart thing so. I'd like to come in here someday when the Cubs were 23 in front at this time of the year. That would be nice. Well, a new century is close to approaching, so maybe moving into the 21st century will be the cure to what's been ailing us. The way the game is today, uh, you can go from last place to first place and first place to last place in a sight of one year. With free agency and players moving around, it can happen very quickly. Two balls, one strike. Sosa leads from first. Two outs. Reds by a run. The pitch to Grace. Paints the outside corner, two and two. Well, everybody asks me back wherever we go and obviously meet a lot of people do some banquets and everybody says are the Cubs going to win in my lifetime and my standard response is how long are you planning to live. <laughs> it's a lot tougher being a fan than it is a player I'll tell you playing was easy. 
It sure was. And it was a lot, a lot of fun. The stretch now, the 2 2. Sosa running the pitch, swung on, high fly ball, shallow right, out goes Reese. He's got it, and the inning is over. Glenn Beckert, great to see you. It's a pleasure. Well, thanks for having me up, guys, Anytime. and good luck. Uh, and I will be here when the Cubs win a World Series. We're going to hold you to that promise. Thank you very much. Glenn Beckert, former Cub great second baseman, it's 4 3 after 7. Meet Caroline. Is a phone. Star 69 from Ameritech. This portion of Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN is brought to you by the new Dodge. From cars to minivans to trucks, it's about change. The new Dodge. 4 3 after 7 here at Wrigley Field. For those of you just joining us, the Reds have done it again. Greg Vaughn, our Ameritech player of the game. And can it be anything else but the two run homer that put the Reds on top for the first time and they lead by that one run. Most home runs versus one opponent this season Sammy against Colorado and Greg Vaughn with eight against the Cubs and we've got to see him three more times. Mark McGuire will not play tonight the Cardinals have the day off so Sosa's lead very very safe. As Mark Lewis stands in, leading off the Cincinnati eighth, Sosa has hit number 59 for the Cubs today. Lewis leading it off. Reds looking for some insurance against Bobby Ayala, who has been unscored upon since coming to the Cubs. And he is, surprisingly, he was let go by the Montreal team, a team that's obviously building for its future, Stoney. But here's a guy in Major League Baseball these days with an ERA under three and a half who was released. Well, certainly it was a good pickup for the Cubs. He's still got very good stuff. And I think he can be a valuable man heading into next year. I know the Cubs at various times during the course of his career tried to get him. Well, there's never been a question about his arm. And Sosa. With that big lead over McGuire this year, has one more than Big Mac in the last two years. And Sammy, if he can hit one more today or down in Houston, would be the first man in the history of baseball ever to hit back to back seasons of 60 or more home runs. That is astounding. Lewis goes down on strikes. Ayala retires. His second man in succession. And now we go to the top of the Cincinnati order. That was a good split finger, and the bottom falls out of this one. So Pokey Reese with a six game hitting streak on the line right now. He is 0 for 4 today. Hasn't had the ball out of the infield. Still doesn't have it out of the infield. A rocket handled by Gaetti. Two down. Pretty hard hit ball. That almost hit Gaetti below the equator, but he makes the play. Gary and his wife breathe a sigh of relief as this one bounces up, but he's able to come up with it. This is a man that we've had all kinds of luck with in this series, Barry Larkin. Two for 21. Wonder how Bayerga would have handled that play. There's a strike. That's an inside joke for our pal Ron Santo, who's doing the game on radio this afternoon. Bullpen up and going for the Cubs. It's Felix once again. Ground ball hit toward the whole left side. Blouser off his glove, can't get it. Larkin is aboard, and let's see how that scored. Would have been a tough play. It is a base hit. Larkin's first of the game, only his third of the series. And now the question for Jim Regelman: Do you bring in Felix to face Sean Casey? Because with the wind blowing out toward right, this is a difficult decision, and there was no way that Jeff Blouser was going to throw out Barry Larkin on that play. So I think the decision's already been made. And I think he's going to go to Heredia. So Ayala gives up the ground ball to Larkin. He hit it to a perfect spot. The Reds have done that all day long. Cincinnati has five infield hits, make it six now with Larkin. But the big blow of the Vaughn two-run homer, they lead 
four to three. Lefty lefty matchup. It'll be Heredia against Casey. Reds by a run. Back with more in a moment. While in the virtual world, rely on the same people you rely on in the real world. UPS, moving at the speed of e-business. Heredia against Casey. As Cincinnati continues to bat here in the eighth inning. And Cubs fans, if you're tired of being told that all the big games you're looking to get tickets for are sold out, well, the answer is this. You can guarantee yourself seats for all Cubs games by becoming a season ticket holder. Season ticket sales for the 2000 season begin in January. And if you would like to be added to our season ticket mailing list, call 773-404-CUBS. Who knows? Sammy Sosa might continue his incredible home run barrage next season, and the kids are on the way, hopefully, sometime in the year 2000. Felix comes on for the 62nd time, 3 and 1, 434 ERA, and he's got a tough customer in Sean Casey. It was the walk to Casey which preceded the home run to Vaughn in the seventh. That's given Cincinnati their first lead of the day. And the Reds just hitting every spot on the Cub infield in perfect position six infield hits by the Reds today and if Felix has had one problem it's retiring the first man he's faced and the problem is if you don't retire Casey he's not going to be around to face Vaughn that's what Rodney Myers is doing in the bullpen one and oh the count and now two and oh Casey Snapped an 0 for 11 slide with a base hit the first inning, then doubled in the third. He is grounded a second, walked and scored, as Steve mentioned. Four to three in favor of the Reds. They try to take four out of five, which was their game plan coming into the series. And be careful about a fastball here, especially middle in. Casey's hitting in the 280s against left handers. The wind still howling today. Over but low, 3 and 0. Oh. Still raining in Philadelphia. Astros three, Phillies one. They wait for the bottom of the ninth inning. Milwaukee's added to their lead. 9-6 over the Diamondbacks in the eighth. The 3-0. That just caught the outside corner. John Lieber, Scott Ellerton tomorrow night in the Astrodome. 7 o'clock our start time here on WGN. Saturday, Micah Bowie against Jose Lima. He'll try to win his 20th. Sunday, Steve Traxel, Chris Holt. Traxel's been pitching very well lately for the Cubs. Three and one. And that's over. But low. Ball four to Casey. Well, another runner in scoring position. Two on, two out. And Felix will not be around to face Greg Vaughn. He came on for one hitter. He couldn't get him. And that's been a problem for him. And now Vaughn. We'll have to look out at Rodney. So Rodney Myers will take the baseball once again. He'll face Vaughn with the Reds looking to pad to their four to three eighth inning lead. You know we have. In our world. The Dominican Republic. Come share our treasures. 4-3 in favor of Cincinnati and Saturday night at 10.30 on WGN. In the darkest corners of L.A., a battle rages and Charles Bronson is on the warpath in Chinchite. Tomorrow night, 10.30 on WGN. Well, in the second game of the doubleheader, Rodney Myers hooked up with Greg Vaughn. Greg Vaughn won that battle, hitting his third of three home runs. So he comes on today with runners at first and second. And it is Rodney against Vaughn once again. And Rodney on for the 39th time, a 3 and 1 record, a 470 ERA. And he'll try to keep Greg Vaughn in the ballpark. Vaughn with five homers in this series. And Rodney's wife, Carrie, on rooting him on today at the ballpark. Uh, just a delightful day for baseball. Well, our good friend Paul Sullivan, beat writer for the Cubs with the Tribune, wants to send along greetings to Charles Lynch in Quincy, Illinois, his granddaughter Kim is in the bleachers today. Cubs also wish Nicole Nassif a speedy recovery. She's at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Manny Alexander at second base on the double switch. And here comes Vaughn two for four today. Swing and a miss. Tell you what Rodney Myers has been very very good. He's been very very bad but he is 
never hesitated to take the baseball for Jim Riggleman this year. And you have to like that about him. Well, if he keeps throwing sliders away from Vaughn, he's going to be in good shape. Nothing in one. That one missed. The Reds gunning for their 46th road win of the year. 53 is their all time franchise record. They've got an outstanding shot to top that this season. Cubs Publications Department wants to wish a happy birthday to Juan Castillo enjoying the game today on WGN. Second half of the year things have gotten a whole lot better for Rodney. The one one. Interesting email question from a fan down in Tennessee. Stoney noticed that during our flashback of Glenn Beckert's highlights, the Cubs didn't have their names on the back of the uniforms. When did the Cubs put the players' names on the back of the jersey here? A little pop back toward us and out of play. I can honestly say that I haven't the fog yet, but. I know they were one of the last teams to do that. Interesting question. We'll have to find out the answer to that one. Aren't too many teams that don't have the players' names on the backs anymore. I know the Yankees don't at home. Thirty four thousand nine seventy six the paid attendance today at the ballpark. So the Cubs approaching the two point four five million mark in attendance a banner year. Ground ball hit toward the left side Gaiety spears it fires a bullet to first Vaughn runs pretty well but not well enough to beat that play and Myers does the job. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Kerry Myers is happy. Let's see if we can make her smile even more if the Cubs can score a couple of runs and take the lead. Detroit was last night. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom. Fly Southwest Airlines from Chicago Midway to St. Louis for $30 when you travel September 1st through September 30th. You are now free to move about the country. Five. Watch way more weigh-ins five days a week. Premiering September 20th at 5. Williamson against Rodriguez as we go to the Cubs half of the eighth inning. And Arnie Harris's good friend Dave from Skokie tells us that the Cubs put the names on the jerseys here at home about four years ago. So Dave we appreciate that. We'll take your word for it. See if Henry can make a name for himself here by hitting a home run that would tie the game. Finally now from Philadelphia the Astros have beaten the Phillies three to one the score. Ken Caminiti drove in one. Daryl Ward drove in another. All the Astro runs came on the home run ball. 0 oh, and 2 to Rodriguez. Shane Reynolds picked up the win. And the Cubs need some runners to give Sosa one more crack. He's already hit number 59 today. 0 oh, and 2 to Henry. And the slider just missed. 9-8 the score in Milwaukee bottom of the eighth inning Brewers leading the Diamondbacks long way to go in that affair just getting ready to get started in San Diego where the Expos do battle this afternoon one and two it's two and two Scott Williamson a non roster invitee by the Reds in spring training and bidding to become the first Reds rookie of the year since Chris Sable won those honors back in 1985. It's going to be an outside fastball maybe Henry can poke it down a third base line because there's nobody home down there. He pulls it instead through the hole on the right side. 
So Henry two out of four today maybe a sign that he's coming out of his mini slump and he represents the game tying run here in the eighth. Now we're going to see a pinch runner for Henry his day is done. Bo Porter will come on. Gets that fastball down around thigh high and Henry able to pull it. And representing the tying run he winds up aboard. So Bo Porter who once sold 50 bases in the minor leagues. He's aboard. And you wonder if they would use the hit and run in this situation. Blouser the batter 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. He bunts the ball toward first and a very good butt. He puts on the brakes and heads back toward home just to make sure that Porter gets into second safely. Sacrifice three unassisted. That's a play where if the first baseman falls asleep and the base runners heads up he might be able to try to take third. Goes the second sacrifice of the year. And instead of running into a tag, Jeff makes Sean Casey work for it. So Reed, two out of two with a walk and a run score. Late swing, nothing in one. Tying run at second with only one out here in the Cubs eighth. The Reds have left 12 men on base in this game. The Cubs have left seven on base so far. The 0 1 to Reed misses. Ball one. Let's pause for station identification. This is America's number one sports station, WGN, Chicago. Steve Stone, Chip Carey from the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. Four to three, Reds have the lead. Almost hit him, two and one. Now the bullpen up and going once again. And it's Terry Adams. Jeff hits one out of the ballpark. Are the Cubs able to score a couple here? Adams would come on for the save. Big advantage for the Cubs is that the Reds outfielders' arms are average at best. And good speed at second and Porter. The 2 1 is out of play. Foul 2 and 2. And a happy fan caught the souvenir here at the ballpark today. And she gave that away to a young fan. That's terrific. Nice catch by that lovely lady at the, at the ballpark today. Two and two to Reed with Gaetti waiting on deck in the pitch. Struck him out looking. A nasty breaking ball, and Reed could not pull the trigger. Wow, what a pitch. Well, that slider caught the inside corner. Jeff thought it was down. Kerwin Daly thought it was good enough, and that was a real good pitcher's pitch. But Gary Gandy can hit a fastball, and he's hoping that that's what he gets from Williamson. Gary 0 for 3 today. Eight games away from 2,500 in his major league career. The pitch. He checked his swing, I believe. Nope, they say he went around. Jim Wolf with the call over at first. And there's strike one. Lead off single by Henry Rodriguez a Jeff Blauser sacrifice Reed struck out on a slider and now Gaetti bats and a real tough spot for him batters box in shadows he's got to peer out in the bright sunshine at the hard throwing side wheeling right hand. I would think that with first base open Williamson would go to his best pitch and that is the slider 
think National League hitters have hit something like 0-38 against that slider. Manny Alexander waiting to get his turn. He came in in the flip-flop batting order in at second base. There was that breaking ball. Thought he missed with it. One and one the count. That man has seen just about everything there is to see in the game of baseball. Jack McKeon. A manager, a general manager. And one of the game's great entertainers. The 1-1 one -one pitch now to Gaetti. And you hear the pitcher grunting with the effort. Williamson, six tall, six feet tall, 185 pounds. 23 years old, ninth round pick by the Reds in 1997. Attended Tulane and Oklahoma State universities. And folks, he is the real deal. Two and one. Reds won an appeal at first, won't get it. Three balls in a strike. The Sun playing tricks with Gaiety here. Clouds covering up the sunshine. And then all of a sudden, they move away and the bright sunshine and shadows creep back in. The Southwest Airlines plane view camera will take a look at tough visibility, and there is a Southwest Airlines plane view camera high atop Wrigley Field. Three and one, two outs to Gary. And that missed. Ball four. Two are on, two are out. And Manny Alexander will take his first look at Williamson in the game. Second walk for the Reds right hand. This is tough to lay off. But you're not going to hit it anyway, so you might as well not swing. And now, Gary Gaetti will take his spot on the bench, and Chad Myers will come on to pinch run. So Porter at second, Myers at first with two outs. Outstanding speed on the base paths. Should Manny be able to hit one into the gap, both men might be able to score here. One run ties it. Two runs give us the lead with Terry Adams getting ready in the bullpen for the ninth inning. Kyle Farnsworth started for the Cubs, pitched very well through six, made one mistake, tried to sneak an inside fastball past Greg Vaughn, and he parked it into the seats, actually over the seats and left, for his 36th home run for Cincinnati and his fifth of the series. Sammy Sosa has homer. Farnsworth also a suicide squeeze, and Henry Rodriguez a base hit, accounting for the Cubs' runs today. We're in Houston tomorrow night. And we open up a three game weekend series. Sammy's going to bat. Unless the Cubs grab the lead here. And Adams hangs on in the night. The strike to Manny Alexander, who has had a good series, as you saw graphically. Our thanks to our senior producer director of Cubs baseball Arnie Harris. Today's game on WGN produced by the commander Pete Toma Mark Brady our associate producer. A wild pitch. Runners move up to second and third. So there's a break. That's 11. Wild pitches by Williamson and that's that slider. And now the tying run just 90 feet away. And a base hit now scores not only the tying but the go ahead run. And Thomas, he had very little chance. Our AD today, the lovely and talented Kathy Kerr, our executive producer of WGN Sports, Bob Orwald, Steve Stone, Chip Carey from beautiful Wrigley Field. Manny Alexander has an even count. And the go ahead run at second with two men down. And now he requests time. Look at where Boone is playing at third base. He's almost in left field. He's playing so deep over there.
One ball, one strike. Fouled straight back. Had a very good cut. Well, he got the one hittable fastball right there. I got to believe he's going to see that slider again. And if it is in the dirt, you want to see Bo Porter coming down that line because they're tough to handle down there. There's been a bonanza of lobs left on base men today. The Cubs have two on the pond here in the eighth inning. Cincinnati has left 12. The Cubs have left seven so far. But Cincinnati with the one run lead. The one two pitch here it is. A little pop shallow right Reese going out on his horse he's got it. And the inning is over. What rage by Pokey Reese. He saved a cup lead with that long running galloping catch. Alexander pops out and the Cubs have left nine through eight. We go to the ninth. Reds by one. It's four to three. Chicago Cubs premiering Monday at 630 and 1030 on WGN. Wholesale changes defensively for the Cubs. Bo Porter in left field as we head to the ninth inning. Jeff Blauser moves from short to third. Manny Alexander moves from second to short. And Chad Myers, who came on as a pinch runner, stays in the game. He'll now play second base. Rodney Myers continues to work here in the ninth inning. He will face Demetri Young for the Reds as they look for a little insurance here in the ninth inning. A slim one run, 4 3 Cincinnati lead. Reds trying to keep pace with the Astros who were winners earlier in Philly a high drive on the first pitch hammer deep toward left long run Porter he leaps up and makes the grab in the corner one down earlier that's out of here fortunately that wind is blowing across otherwise that one is out of here Dimitri Young hit it hard not quite hard enough Bo Porter does a nice job of going all the way back to the Ivy before hauling it in. So one up one down and it's Eddie Tobinsey. Tobinsey two singles one of them an infield hit the Reds have six of those today reached on a force play and scored on a Mark Sweeney pinch hit single in the sixth Reds got two in the sixth two in the seventh and they have a one run lead. Activity in the Reds bullpen as Tobin see it's a high pop left side. Who wants this? Bo Porter and Manny Alexander get their wires crossed and it's a sliding break double for Tobin see. Well this has got to be a real difficult play for Manny. The wind is blowing it across. And that ball just blew away from Alexander and Porter. You see Manny looking for help but the help is not there. And, and that's, it goes that's a bloop double, and now a pinch runner for Tobinson. And that's a lack of familiarity with the outfield conditions here by Bo Porter, and it comes at a very costly time, perhaps, for the Cubs. As pinch runner on for Cincinnati here after the bloop double by Tobinson. Kelly Robinson, I think, comes on a pinch run. So a big run, perhaps, for Cincinnati. Sosa will bat one more time. Sammy will hit third in the bottom of the ninth inning. Another ball gets away from the Cincinnati pen. Mike Cameron is the batter for the Reds now. He is 0 for 3 with a walk. The Reds have left 12 on base. The Cubs have left 9 on base today. One and out to Cameron. A swing and a miss. Four to three, Cincinnati. Reds with those sleeveless uniforms. Very Natalie attired bunch. And for a strike, it's 0 and 2. 
There used to be the Cincinnati Red Legs. Don't see too many guys wearing the stirrups high enough to call them Red Legs. And originally the Cincinnati Red Stockings. Don't see that either. Leo 2. Brown ball hit towards short. And he handles that cleanly. One down. Take that two down, a big pardon. Cameron at second. And it's up to Michael Tucker, I believe. He'll come on and pinch it for Aaron Boone. Tucker in the throes of a serious Cincinnati slump. And this will be his first appearance in the series. He'll bat for Williamson, by the way. Now Williamson the pitched very well. And now the question is, you've got first base open. And you've already made the switch. You've got Lewis at third, a right-hander who's in the number nine spot and was a strikeout victim last inning. So you certainly want to be careful with Tucker here. Tucker at 251 with 10 home runs for the Reds. I think they're going to put him at first, which is, I think, what you should do. Take your chances with Lewis, who's a good hitter, but it's still a righty-righty matchup. And that's what the Cubs will do. They'll walk him intentionally. First and second, two outs. There's ball three. And ball four. So two are on, two are out. By all rights, this inning should already be over, but Tom and see a bloop double into shallow left. Bo Porter and Manny Alexander could not make the play. And the Reds look for some insurance. They try to keep pace with the Red Hot Astros, who completed a 7 0 road trip. They won three in Montreal and four in Philadelphia. The pitch lined up the middle off Myers' glove into center field. Streaking around is Robinson. The throw is not cut off. And Lewis comes through with a big pinch hit. Once again, we intentionally walk somebody. And again, the Reds come through with a big hit. Well, Jim Riggleman can't believe it because you make the moves you're supposed to move. You get the righty righty matchup and Lewis takes it right back up the middle and that's the streak that both the Cubs and Riggs are in. The only thing you can do is make a move that percentage dictates and then you have to allow your players to execute if they can't do it. There's really not much you can do. So the strategy backfires and the costly blunder by Porter in left comes back to haunt us. The Reds now a two run lead and Reese the batter. He is old for five today. He gets a reprieve. He tries to extend again that hitting streak. He came into the series or into this ball game eight out of 18 in the series. He's eight for 23 now. So Lewis and Tucker aboard now for the Reds. A 1 0. Good breaking ball. A ball and a strike. It just seems time after time this year, Stephen, it's been a problem all year long that whenever the Cubs make a mistake, the opposition just pounces on us. And that has happened with alarming frequency. Time was called and given. It's not just the physical errors. The Cubs have made 122 of those. It's just plays that this team doesn't make that aren't reflected as far as the error column is concerned in well like a, a bloop double by Tobinsey which helps set up this inning and a huge difference between trying to get two or three in the ninth than trying to tie it up with one one ball one strike to pokey Reese Two home runs in this ball game, one by each team. Greg Vaughn hit his 36th, Sammy Sosa his 59th. 
Two and one. Over for a strike. Two and two. The Reds traded away Brett Boone to get Denny Nagel and to get this guy in the lineup every day at second base. Boy, are they happy they made that deal. Nothing against Brett Boone, but Reese has been spectacular. Wild pitch. And that one way off the mark. That moves runners into second and third. So now base hit scores another couple of runs, and that might be the topper. So the biggest pitch as far as Rodney is concerned. As he comes on with just his first wild pitch of the year. Well, it's his game. Nobody else up in the cup pen, and Larkin waiting on deck. First base. He is unoccupied. They're at second and third. Two down. One in for the Reds. They now lead by a 5-3 score in the payoff pitch. He is whacked into the seats. Sammy Sosa will bat in the ninth. Seeking 60. The 3 2 again. He's again fouled out of play. Oh, and a fan in the front row wearing a red windbreaker had an easy hop. And he booted it. A nice soft roller. And the ball girl will not give him a second chance. Boo. Oh, you got to make that play, pal. Maybe it was a red windbreaker that convinced her. Three and two. A little chopper hit towards short. And he in, up, across. In time, close play. Reese really runs well, but he's 0 for 6. The Reds get a very big insurance run, but stay tuned. Sammy Sosa's due up third in the ninth as the Cubs try to rally here at home. That's the ticket. It's 5-3 as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And Saturday at 3 on WGN, battling gods, dueling monsters. This guy gets all the action. No, it's not the Arnie Harris story. It's Hercules. Don't miss it. It's Saturday at 3 here on WGN. We go to the ninth inning. Top three of the order due for the Cubs. Michael Tucker stays in the game. He's in right for Cincinnati and the ever present Danny Graves who's been in every one of the wins that the Reds have had in the series and now he's on for the fourth time and he's looking for yet another save and he's got a two run cushion Graves looking for save number twenty one on for the sixty fifth time three oh nine ERA and Jason LaRue behind the plate as well. So battery of LaRue and Graves, Tucker and Wright, and Lance Johnson leads it off in the ninth inning. Lance has single. Fly to right, bounced to first, and walked. And he's grounded to second. One down in the Cubs' ninth. Somebody's got to give on, get on to give Sosa a chance to tie it with one swing of the bat, and that's the importance of that Cincinnati run in the ninth inning. Well, that somebody is Roosevelt Brown. And Rodney Myers leaves the game. And if Roosevelt gets on, Sammy will represent the tying run. Brown 0 for 8 as a pinch hitter for the Cubs this year. And he looks at a pitch high. 1 and 0 oh the count. The Reds, two outs away. Let's see if somebody can get on for Sammy and or Grace. Reds five, Cubs three. High drive hammered toward left. Fawn on the run at the warning track. Leaps up and hauls it in. Roosevelt hit it a long way, but again, the wind is blowing and knocking that ball down. And that ball been hit to right, would have been a home run. It wasn't, and it wasn't. 
A nice play by Greg Vaughn as he stays right with it. And if Sammy is to hit his 60th, it will not tie the ball game, but it will get the Cubs one run closer. So Sammy sitting on 60 and sitting on baseball history. 59 home runs. He's 11 away from Mark McGuire's all time single season record. The pitch. Rifle out of play. Good cut. It's strike one to Sosa. No man has ever. It's 60 home runs in two straight years. It's going to happen for Sammy Sosa. The only question is when. Thirty one of his fifty nine have come here at home. Everybody's standing for the at bat the 0 1 pitch. Oh two. So the Cubs and Sosa down to their final strike of this game. Sullivan and Farnsworth the pitchers of record today. No balls two strikes the pitch just missed off the corner. One and two the count to Sammy the pitch breaking ball who oh, it was letter high and he chopped it fouled and out of play well, Graves hung that one Wow and he got away with it this one hangs on the inner porch and it just comes up and says hit me and Sammy just got over the top of it folks all lined up ready for historic number 60 I got to think Graves is going to the high heat trying to keep it up and out of the zone. One and two to Sammy. Here it is. Close the high heat. Almost hit him. Two and two the count. Now you tried to back him up. You've straightened him up with the inside pitch. Another high fastball. But he's going to the hook, Chippy. The 2 2. It hung up there, and Sosa took it for strike three called. And the Cincinnati Reds have won their fourth game in five tries against the Cubs, freezing Sosa on a chilly day at Wrigley Field. Final score Reds five, Cubs three. Totals highlights right after this. Well, the Cubs conclude this homestand in a very, very poor fashion. One and seven, the final one loss total for the Cubs. The Reds win four out of five, winning today 5-3, 5-14-0 for Cincinnati. They left 14 men on base today. For the Cubs, three runs, nine hits, no errors. Scott Sullivan, the winner. Kyle Farnsworth, the tough luck loser, falls to three and nine. Graves works a one, two, three, ninth to earn his 21st save. Greg Vaughn hit his 36th home run and fifth of the series. Sammy Sosa hit his major league leading 59th of the year. And here it is for Sammy Sosa. A two out rocket into straightaway center field. A two out blast in the fifth inning off Pete Harnish. The starter for Cincinnati who did not figure in this decision. So the Cubs hit the road. Three in Houston and three in Cincinnati. The Reds head home to face the Marlins and of course the Cubs. We're back at it tomorrow night. Join us at 7 o'clock for game one of the Cubs Astro series from the Dome. It'll be John Lieber and Scott Ellerton tangling down in southern Texas. Cincinnati wanted four out of five. They got four out of five. They froze the Cubs in the night today, winning 5-3. The final score for Steve Stone, Arnie Harris, and our entire WGN crew. This is Chip Carey. Thanks for joining us. Here's your invitation. Stay tuned. The 10th inning show is coming up next. Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN was brought to you by Budweiser, who salutes America's responsible drinkers.
Ameritech. In a world of technology, people make the difference. Pepsi, the joy of cola. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Southwest Airlines, offering low fares and frequent flights. Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the Chicago Cubs. The 10th inning is brought to you by Ambassador Cannon, keeping people in business, in business. Hi again, everybody. Chip Carey. Welcome to the 10th inning show. Cincinnati beats the Cubs today 5-3 to three, the final score. The Reds take four out of five in the series. And the Cubs finish up this homestead a very disappointing 1-7 and seven on the year. The Reds, one of the hottest home run hitting teams in all of baseball, proved it once again. When we come back, we'll show you the highlights from today's game as the Reds take four out of five and keep their playoff hopes alive. The versatile Mercury Villa. one 800 one rate to enroll. Cincinnati wins it 5-3, the final score again. Hi again, Chip Carey. Welcome back to the award-winning 10th inning show. Let's show you the highlights from Cincinnati's fourth win in this five-game series. Looked like it was going to be the Cubs' day early. Henry Rodriguez got the fun started with a two-out base hit in the first inning. That scored Mickey Morandini, and the Cubs jumped in front by one. In the second, good fundamental baseball. Lead-off double by Reed. Gaiety hits the ball to the right side. Then Kyle Farnsworth with the squeeze play. That scored Reed, and the Cubs led by two. In the fifth inning, the big blow of the day. Sammy Sosa hit his 59th home run of the campaign, and the Cubs jumped in front by a score of 3 nothing. But the Reds came back with a pair of runs in the sixth. That made it 3-2, to two. and Sammy and the Cubs trying to kiss Cincinnati out of town with a loss. But Greg Vaughn, the hottest hitter on this Red team, hit his fifth home run of the series. A two-run shot after a one-out walk to Sean Casey. For Vaughn, his 36th, and the Reds led by a score of 4-3. to three. They added a ninth-inning run and win 5-3 today. Winner in the ballgame, Scott Sullivan, now 5-3. Kyle Farnsworth falls to 3-9. and nine. Danny Graves, a 1-2-3-9 earns his 21st save of the year. 5-3 Cincinnati back with a final word on the 10th inning show right after this. All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. Our next Cubs telecast on WGN tomorrow night. Game one of a three-game series between the Cubs and the Astros. Join, join me, Chip Carey, along with Randy Hundley for the game tomorrow night beginning at 7 o'clock Central Time. 5-3 is the final score. The Reds take four out of five from the Cubs. Sad final score and a sad story in baseball. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Jim Catfish Hunter, who succumbed to Lou Gehrig's disease today. For our entire crew, this is Chip Carey. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow night. So long, everybody. The 10th inning was brought to you by General Motors. People in motion.